Evening everyone, Captain Carl Burnside here. <clears throat> Welcome to another episode of Thumbs Up Charter Services Behind the Scenes. We actually had this video on wheel bearings already recorded and unfortunately during the editing of it um, we lost the first half due to a power anomaly let's say during a thunderstorm. So <clears throat> we're going to refilm the first half of this video we're just telling you this because you're going to notice. Uh, the second half, you know, is going to show a wheel hub assembly without a brake unit on it. That's what we were filming. Unfortunately, we had it all done. And those hubs are back on the trailer with new tires. So you'll see that in the second half. <clears throat> the first half, we're going to have to use good old brake drum for the rear axle. Uh, just not efficient to take this thing apart at this point with all that hard work so anyways just letting you know that fire the editor that would be me I know had a little problem there but this episode is going to be about wheel bearings and uh, repacking them replacing races um, inspection cleaning of the bearings etc so the first question folks might ask is why repack my wheel bearings well if you've ever driven down any major freeway in the summer, um, you're bound to see a trailer sitting on the side of the road without a vehicle attached to it, maybe sitting on a neg crate, maybe sitting on a hydraulic jack, maybe the axles that's got the tire removed and the axles laying on the ground and the boat's tilted at a 30 degree angle. That's why you want to replace or at least repack and check your wheel bearings. So without any further delay, let's show you what a bad bearing looks like and we've already taken some of these out we've taken the races out and uh, I should mention this particular trailer is a 1974 it's a little hard to work on usually you could tap these races out if you've got to replace them okay by coming in the back grabbing the edge and gently tapping them out these particular hubs didn't allow us to do that um, I'm thinking probably because of uh, the design and there wasn't enough lip here to grab with a chisel or punch to get those out. So what I had to do was literally go in with a, with a die grinder cutoff wheel and cut these races as they sat to relieve the pressure so I could then knock the two pieces out once they were cut. You got to be really careful when you do that. I save older die grinder discs just for that occasion for small emergencies because, you know, they're like this big when you buy them. But if, as you use them, they grind down. And I save these for projects that are in tight spaces like this. You can come in here and carefully cut and not damage the parent part. One thing I do want to stress to you, no matter what, reach into my little bag over here, is to wear a pair of safety glasses when you're doing this. Um, several years ago with this very die grinder, <clears throat> I was working on a vehicle in here and this wheel exploded. And if I hadn't had my safety glasses on, when the wheel exploded, it actually came through the left uh, part of the safety glasses and a chunk, a pizza pie shaped chunk or slice shaped chunk came in and stuck right through this glass. And if I didn't uh, have a pair of safety glasses on, I would have lost my left eye. So safety glasses and any of this stuff is very important. The other thing, the things we're doing here, we've done for years. This, this is just generally showing you the process of what we do. There's many methods to do this. Everybody, everybody's procedure is a little bit different. Um, and as such, you know, it's given at your own risk. Okay. Um, Follow instructions, follow service manuals, things like that, because we're not showing you all the steps. So let's get right to it and just show you the basics here of what a bad bearing and race look like. Now, I'm going to take you over here to the light. Hopefully this comes out okay. A little bit brighter light here for you. You can see on the inside of this race where I'm pointing, there's a lot of corrosion and pitting where the, where the rollers of the bearing ride and this race is in pretty bad shape if I were to pull apart <clears throat> a wheel hub like I did on this this is something that definitely you would not 
reuse. Similarly, the bearing itself, you can see here in the cage, has corrosion. There's corrosion on the back side. And on the rollers, you can actually see, you can see pitting and corrosion as well. And on the, on the cage between the rollers, you can see it. And when I spin this bearing, it actually feels like sandpaper. And they should never feel like that. They should feel um, very smooth, okay? Um, no rough spots or anything like that. So this bearing, just by the appearance without even rotating it after it was cleaned, this thing was ready to fail. And this is why you see trailers on the side of the road, okay? Is these things will eventually fly apart, get hot, fly apart, and, you know, cause a failure where you end up in tennis shoe mode. So let's go back real quick, and we're going to look at what good bearings look like. Now here's a brand new race and a bearing for the very same project here. <clears throat> and what you can see, let me get me centered up here, on this race being brand new is how clean and shiny that is. All right? No pitting, no rust, no corrosion, no bluing. Okay, if you see bluing in here or or looks like burn marks, that would be a problem too. But that is a perfect race. And this is a perfectly brand new bearing. In fact, your bearings should really look like this when you pull them out after you clean them. You should turn them and not feel that sandpaper feel to them. They should be nice and smooth. They should be shiny and bright. There shouldn't be any scoring on the rollers, any corrosion, you know, obvious signs of wear, bluing from heat, anything like that. Okay? So that's why we <clears throat> that's why we're, you know, replacing the grease and pack repacking these bearings. We got to inspect them to see what's bad, and it's a good thing we did. I'm actually surprised that we made it home with this boat on some of the bearings that I pulled out of this thing. Now a word about grease that you're going to use. I'm not going to throw around any names, but you should use good quality grease. Synthetic on a boat trailer is a must. Uh, stands way up, stands up better to water intrusion and moisture, okay, and heat. Another big, how would you say, misconception is a lot of, you hear a lot of folks say, well, more grease the better. So where the bearings live in here, I'm going to, once I, you know, clean them and everything, I pack this entire hub full of grease. That's really not a good idea. We'll get into that a little bit later in the video for some reasons that maybe you haven't thought of. And that information that I'm going to share with you comes from bearing manufacturers, okay, of why not to do that. We're also going to cover um, the installation and use of bearing buddies. And again, there's, these are a good tool if they're used correctly. And uh, I really like the Bearing Buddies because they're made in the USA. I've put them on all my trailers in the past 30 years. If you follow the manufacturer's directions, they'll work fantastic for you. Okay? But uh, if you don't and you follow some of the misconceptions that are out there, you'll get in trouble the first time you pump these full of grease, and then you'll be swearing at these, you know, that they're no good for the... The rest of your life but if you use them correctly they're a great tool bearing buddy has been around for like 50 years and their information does say that it does eliminate the need to repack your bearings again if you've cleaned them and, and put them together or maybe you got a new trailer and you just put them on i'm of the belief and this is my belief okay not not the folks at bearing buddy or anybody else in the industry is just out of experience being in a boating situation, depending how long and how many times you use this and how many times you dunk this thing in the water, that eventually you're going to have to repack your bearings and at least inspect them. To assume that it would be good for the life of the trailer does imply that the rear seal that you'll see us put in here uh, is also good for the life of the trailer. And we know that's a wear item. And once that thing wears and can no longer function correctly, then you have a problem regardless of a bearing buddy on it or not. So we're going to show you right now, we've removed the races out of this uh, drum. In fact, we've removed them out of all the drums because all the bearings are bad. But we're going to show you how to install a bearing race without damaging it. A lot of guys or folks want to take this 
they want to put it in here and then they want to take a block of wood and smack it till it's flush with the housing and then they'll take another device, you know, a punch of some sort, and tap and drive this along the edge all the way home to where it's fully seated in the hub or in the bearing drum. The problem with doing that is if you nick and mar up this area here, you've done nothing but destroy a new perfectly good race. Um, and you're pretty much in the same position you were if you had bad grease and a rusted bearing. It's just not going to last for you. So we're going to show you a cool trick we've come up with to get these in. And if you're doing a lot of these, um, like we do, uh, you should probably have yourself a small hydraulic press. Uh, you don't need a huge one. You know, a $100 press somewhere would work terrific from like a Harbor Freight or something like that. It doesn't have to be that much more special than that. But it'll save you the grief of failing a bearing early. Okay, so in our next uh, step here, we're going to take that, that brake drum over to the press and we're going to press in this uh, bearing, new bearing race and uh, you'll be able to see the whole thing live. All right, so before you uh, press that press that new race into that bearing hub you want to come in here and we've already pretty much done this but clean out all the grease from the center of the hub all the other debris that might be in here anything that would cause a problem with a new bearing and its longevity I just like to use some carburetor cleaner come in here and hose it out really good and you got to use a clean rag I use clean rags, not dirty ones. Make sure you come in here and my final swipe I usually wipe and then push all the way through just to push, expel all any debris out from one end of it. And then uh, flip it around some clean parts there and just give her a good clean wipe there at the end. So now that we've done that, we'll take it over here to the press and uh, we'll pop this bearing bearing in this uh, this race right into it all right all right so we've got our uh, our brake drum here hub assembly in the arbor press got it shored up and supported we're going to put our new bearing race in here kind of like that so then what we're going to do is take an old bearing that we're not going to use that has been cleaned up and that we don't care about and we're to put it right in the race kind of like that we're going to square up the race a little bit take a socket or other type device to spread out the force across the inner bearing race and then pop your press arbor into that socket lower it on in there by pumping down your hydraulic jack and what's going to happen is we'll start this thing and this this race is going to want to wobble a bit back and forth so we might have to move it around a little bit to get her started but once we get her started and going straight she'll pop right in so let's watch this here here we go Just felt it contact, okay? And we, like I say, we'll have to move this a little bit here and there just to get her to start straight. So you just kind of rotate it around like that. Off center a little bit so this will cock back for you. There we go, and I think she's just about started and ready to go. So we'll ease that up and center it back up. Lock it in tight. Pump down on her again. Yep, she's going. And we'll take it down there and home. Now you'll know when you get to the bottom because your jack or your, your pumping on the jack will just about stop. It'll get real stiff when you've driven this home. And there it is right there. One more pump, make sure she's fully seated. 
bring your hydraulic jack and ram back up, take your socket off, take the bearing out, and you got yourself a perfectly installed race that has no damage from beating it with a hammer and a chisel to get that race down and seated. Okay, well, let's talk about bearing packing for a minute. There's what I call old school and new school. Old school is you take your bearing, you get some grease, you put a big old wad of grease right in your palm, and you do what you call packing the bearing. You'd sit here and literally push that grease from your palm into the bearing until you've seen it come out the top of the bearing. You have to rotate it and do that all the way around, just like that. And it takes a little while to do it, and it's kind of a pain in the butt. You never put these bearings in without packing them. And packing basically implies that we get, we get grease to squish all around the inside of the rollers on the inside of this thing. Don't come in here and just pat some grease on the outside and throw it in. That bearing will fail. They have to be packed. So the high-tech version of doing this is using something called a bearing packer. And these things you can pick up at your better quality auto parts stores, Napa's, or maybe Auto Value Private Jobbers. The cheesier stores with ring job in a can and fuzzy dice probably aren't going to have this. But what it does is it does that process I just showed you much quicker. You drop the bearing onto the lower cone. You screw down the top cone. And this thing's kind of self-centering on the bearing when we get it down there. Yep, straightens that bearing right out. Get her a little snug, okay? Take your grease gun with your synthetic grease in it and pump this about 10 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10 all right and what that's going to do that looks like we need a couple more here sometimes you do just depends Let's see where we stand here now there we go we got it. what that's going to do is just did that hand method in a few seconds for you it did it much cleaner for you but which you can see when I unscrew this top is the grease will be coming out between all the rollers on the inner all the way around. You can see that it's all the way around on the inside, all the way around on the outside now, and that bearing is properly packed. Okay, So where we would go from there is to take your hub, take a dab of grease, and we're going to do the inner first where the seal goes but just take some grease and roll it around in here be careful you could be sharp edges in here you just want to smooth that around on the inside diameter to prevent corrosion okay and get it on the race too so the bearings got some grease on the inside there and then flip it over drag it through and do the same thing here okay just like that and that's all the grease you need in this hub. You don't need to pack any more than that in there. And you really don't want to. Okay. So then the next thing you do is take the bearing that you'd packed and dab some grease on the outside of it all the way around. All right. You don't need a whole lot, but she's got to have some. Okay. Just kind of put it around like that. Scrape off the excess grease back in the container. Grab your bearing. Grab your hub. Insert the bearing into the new race. The next step we're going to do is we're going to put in a grease seal on the back side of this thing. And we'll have to tap that in with a block of wood. Alright, we're going to put a new grease seal on the back of this this hub here, this brake drum hub, got our new bearing in here, all greased up, drop the seal in. Now this is where you do lightly tap and use a, like a block of wood. That works best, something that's in halfway decent shape. Very t gently tap this in. 
okay? And you just want to go flush with it, okay? Something like that. You see that we're nice and flush, all right? Reach in, grab a little bit, little bit of grease, put it around that lip seal, okay? Help that thing out. So it's going to need a little seal, or a little grease on it for that seal not to be torn up and lubricate that properly as the wheel goes round and round, right? So there's that. Now what you do is you would flip this over, continue on the other side with the bearing packer, all right? With your other bearing, put your bearing in here and pack it, and then uh, you know, we'll be ready to reassemble this onto the vehicle. Hey folks, Captain Carl Burtside here, back with you for part two on our wheel bearing hub rebuilds and uh, repacking wheel bearings, installing new races and things like that. So in our last segment we rebuilt this unit, put a new grease seal in it, put a new race in the back, put a new bearing in the back, and just reused the front, cleaned it and repacked it. And now we're going to talk a little bit real quick about bearing buddies before we go over and install this. And for you, those of you who don't know, Bearing Buddies have been around a long time, maybe 50 years or so. And the idea here is, is that this hub uh, has air in it. And a Bearing Buddy replaces the dust cap on the front of the unit. And he uses Zerk fitting on a grease gun to basically fill this with grease and then pressurize this area to keep water out when you back the boat in to a boat ramp while you're unloading the boat. They work really well. I put them on about everything that I have uh, that goes into the water. In fact, all trailers that go into the water. But a couple of misconceptions about this and how you use it is a lot of folks think you keep pumping on this forever until you completely fill this hub full of grease. It's not exactly true. The principle works on a pressure. This has got a spring in it, okay, in this cup with this piston on the inside pushes against the grease as you, as you, as you uh, load this hub. And that pressurizes this area. So what, when the hub is warm after you've driven the vehicle and you back it in the water and you quench this in cool water, everything will cool and contract, including the air inside, which makes a slight vacuum, and then it can actually suck water and debris through the back seal. That's the theory of how it works. The bearing body keeps this area pressurized to prevent that from happening. So don't over pump these and we'll show you once we get it installed exactly how to adjust these to make sure you just got enough grease in there. Another misconception is, as you may have seen in the last episode, we don't pack this hub full of grease. A lot of guys will tell you, the more grease the better, pack this hub. Well, that presents a problem uh, in bearing technology called churning. And it requires a little science and math to understand exactly how churning works, and I promise you there won't be any on any of our episodes, but if you can understand the concept about how a spin cycle on a clothes washer works and how a butter churn works, you can understand grease churning in a bearing. And what that theory is, is if we pack this full of grease when we're repacking our bearings, there's no space in here or no void. It's all full of grease. When this starts to rotate down the road at a high speed, just like on a spin cycle on a washing machine, it'll try to force this grease to the outer edges of this hub. When that grease hits the hub, the only place it could go is left or right, so it pushes down towards the bearings. Well, the bearings themselves are rotating down the road, okay, like little pumps, and as this grease comes in, it has to be processed through the bearing, and the bearing expels it back out. That process is called churning. And what happens is, believe it or not, there's enough friction coefficient in grease over a long period of time that can actually add additional heat to the hub, to the grease, and start to oxidize the grease. And the way you know your grease is oxidized, if you ever pull off a, a dust cap on one of these hubs, if you get like liquid oil out first, your grease has started to, to degrade and it started to oxidize. And we don't want that to happen. So with all that said, you're saying, Captain Carl, you just told me we're going to pump grease in the front of this thing. Well, the concept is that we're not pumping enough grease to completely fill this. Okay, we're just putting enough in here to create a pressure. And the Bearing Buddy people here do indicate that um, their product does prevent the need to repack bearings over the life of the, of the trailer. 
I'm more proactive on it. <clears throat> what I say is I'm tearing these bearings apart at least on my schedule about every four years. I said four to five in the first video. My use schedule on these dictates about every four years. I'll take these apart and repack them and check everything. And I do recommend that for you guys. But there is a potential here, depending on your duty cycle, never to have to repack your bearings again with a bearing buddy if you use it for their directions. It's a great product, really like it. Uh, made in USA, can't say enough about it. Um, and they look cool too. So without any further uh, ado, we're gonna go over to the trailer. We're gonna go put this uh, hub back on and I'll show you how the whole thing goes together, how to adjust the bearings. And uh, we'll see you over the trailer in a minute. Okay, so we're at, this, at the axle assembly. This is your spindle where your hub goes, okay, and your wheel is attached. I've already cleaned this, this spindle. Um, your seal back here rides on this journal. Your bearing rides right here for the rear bearing, and then your front bearing is going to ride right here. So those areas, you want to make sure that you don't have any damage from scoring, overheat, uh, corrosion, anything like that. If, it, if it's severely damaged in those areas because of lack of maintenance, then you're unfortunately probably going to have to put an axle in, in the trailer. They do make a, what they call a speedy sleeve for the seal area that slides over here if the seal area is damaged so that you can use a, use a seal again and not have to replace this axle assembly. But in this case, we have a really old trailer here. It's a 1974. These areas were okay. This was okay. We had a little corrosion in here, which is very typical. I took some crocus cloth and some 3 ounce scotch brite and carefully cleaned that area up before washing it down with some uh, parts cleaner and then putting grease on the spindle itself. Uh, I don't recommend grinding any of this because you could slip and get into a bearing area there and then you're in real trouble because the bearings have to float on this thing. They can't, they can't be held up or they can't bind. So it's a pretty simple procedure. Now we got it put back together. The ceiling goes inboard. We slide the hub onto the spindle. We push it back. And we got bearing caught. There we go. Push it back into place. There we go. Push it on. This is a castle nut. As you can see, it's got a bunch of grooves cut in it because there's a cotter pin that goes in here after we tighten this up and adjust the bearing. This is the only thing that's holding your your hub on and your wheel on as you go down the road besides the castle nut. If this is gone, the castle nut will back off and the whole assembly will come flying off. You've probably seen that on the side of the road. So always, this adjustment's critical and always use a new cotter pin anytime you service these things. I'm going to put our castle nut on by hand. And then we've got to what we call set the bearing. Okay. So we're going to rotate it and tighten it up a little bit. Just enough to seat the bearings in their races. Okay. Then we're going to back this off. And this is now a hand adjustment. You want to just take the castle nut, take the slack out of it as best you can. Get it tight and then back it off slightly to the point where you could get the you could get the cotter pin in to the hub. And my hole, it's a good idea to find where your hole is. My hole is right in here. I believe it's almost at 12 o'clock. See if I can find it. Where did you go, hole? Let's see if we can see it here. Where did he go? I'm not seeing it. Okay, stop the video for one sec. Let me check this. Okay, sorry about the compressor there. We're back at it again. We started the video and the compressor side kicked on. We turned it off. But we set it with a crescent wrench, press the bearing, or not press the bearing, but set the bearing in, tightened it a bit, backed it off. We've adjusted it by hand. Right there, our cotter pin location is right here. And I'm actually gonna bring this up this way so you guys can see what I do with it. Slide it through, bend it over, okay? That's your first maneuver. Take your clean mallet, 
give her a tap. The second one, you're going to want to cut off because you can't get your cap on without it. Take a pair of diagonal pliers, give it a snap, it's in. Okay? Ready to go back to service. Turns quite freely. Okay, so now that we got the cotter pin in, the bearing adjusted correctly, we're going to put the bearing buddy on. Pretty simple procedure here. Hopefully it doesn't blind you guys too much. I packed the end of the bearing buddy with some grease because otherwise you got to pump it up with a grease gun. Saves a little time. A little cheap method. Simply put the bearing buddy up onto the hub. Block wood in front of it. Give it a tap. Drive it flush. Okay, it's flush to the front of the hub, right where your gre right right where your grease cap would go. It's flush right to the front of the hub. It's installed. So the trick to the bearing buddy is nice drop light. Always love drop lights. You gotta give it a couple squirts of grease here to load this and pressurize this. You click on your grease gun. Come on in. And you start pumping. And if you watch, this cone starts to come out. See that? Now that's three squirts of grease. Whatever. And as you can see, I can move it. So this cone has floated off of the <coughs> coat is floated off of a seat. And as long as I can move that about an eighth of an inch in any direction, that bearing's pressurized. There's no need to put more grease in here and pump this all the way out to the end. All you're doing is overloading this hub with grease. How often do you have to do it? Check it several times a season, of course, before you go in the water or before you take off for the lake. If you can't move this freely by doing this, Put just a couple pumps of grease in it at a time until you can. That's all you need to do until you can make it move, just like that. With new seals on the back, this potentially could stay here for quite some time. Possibly maybe half your season, maybe more. But just check it before you dunk it in the lake to make sure she's got pressure in her and she's going to react the way you want to. So that's pretty much it at this point, with the exception of putting on a brand new wheel which we will do right now on the tire. Making it look pretty. Always got to do that. Alright, so we got the wheel on, the tire on, and the hub. Bearing buddy in place. Ready to go back on the road. Thanks for joining us today. Really appreciate it. At thumbs up charter surfaces for behind the themes and thumb, thumbs up. If you want to go on a fish charter, give us a call at 810 513 6073. Visit us on the web, thumbsupcharter.com, or Facebook at thumbs up charter surfaces. Google us, thumbs up charter services in Seabwing or Bayport, Michigan. Love to take your reservation, love to take you out on a trip. Thanks, folks. Until next time when we do the rear brakes and have fun with that, Captain Carl Burnside here, where I'm wild for walleye. Take care. Bye-bye.